Welcome to section 9.6, Properties of Probability. At the end of this section, you should be able to answer these questions. Is the probability of A and B an intersection or a union? What is the mathematical notation to indicate this situation? How do we calculate this probability? Which mathematical operations do we use? Is the probability of A or B an intersection or a union? What is the mathematical notation to indicate this situation? How do we calculate this probability? Which mathematical operations do we use? What are complementary events? When might we take advantage of the existence of complementary events? What key words can signal the opportunity to use the concept of complementary events? This section covers three main ideas. Calculating the probability of the intersection of two events, calculating the probability of the union of two events, and calculating the probability of the complement to an event. Let's start with calculating the probability of the intersection of two events. The probability of the intersection of two events is an AND situation. We calculate it according to these rules. If the probability of B slash A is the probability that B occurs after event A has already occurred, then the probability of both A and B occurring is symbolized by this upside down U, so the probability of A intersecting with B, and we calculate it by taking the probability of A and multiplying by the probability of B given that A has already occurred. Now if A and B are independent events, then the probability that B occurs after A has already occurred is just the probability of B occurring. So our formula looks a little simpler, but it's calculating the same answer. Probability of A intersecting with B equals the probability of A times the probability of B. The probability of the union of two events is an OR situation. And here are the rules we use to calculate OR probabilities. The probab if events A and B are not mutually exclusive, then the probability of A or B is equal to this notation, A with a U to stand for union, B, and we take the probability of A and add the probability of B and then subtract the probability that A and B occur. This is very similar to the numerical formula we used to calculate the number of ways an event, two events could occur in an OR situation. Now if A and B are mutually exclusive, then there is no overlap, and the probability of A or B simplifies to the probability of A plus the probability of B. Finally, complementary events are two situations where you have A and not A, which covers the entire range of possibilities. Either A occurs or A does not occur. In calculating the probability that A does not occur, that formula is simply 1 minus the probability that A occurs, because the probability of A plus the probability of not A occurring is 100%. Either A will occur or A will not occur. Let's look at an example that incorporates all three of these ideas. Calvin and Phoebe volunteer in the children's ward of a hospital. The probability that Calvin gets mumps as the result of a visit to the ward is P of C, which is 14%, and the probability that Phoebe gets mumps is P of PH, which equals 8%. Find the probability that both catch mumps. Answer in percentages. Well, we are trying to find the probability that Calvin gets mumps and Phoebe gets mumps. So we're in an and situation if they both get mumps. And we have two choices here for the probability of A and B. 
and we need to decide which one to use. Well, it says nothing about the fact that Phoebe is affected by the fact that Calvin gets mumps. So we are working with independent events, which is referred to in this second formula. So we will take the probability of C, or Calvin getting mumps, multiply by the probability of Phoebe getting mumps, and that is 0.14 times 0.08. And we should come up with an answer of 1.12%. Let's look at another situation. Now we're trying to be asked to find the probability that Calvin does not catch mumps. Calvin not catching mumps is the complement to Calvin catching mumps. So we're going to use this last formula, and we'll say that probability of not C should equal the 1 minus the probability of C, which is 1 minus 0.14. And we end up with 86%. Our next question asks, find the probability that Phoebe does not catch mumps. Again, we'll use the same logic and the same formula, our complementary formula. So the probability of not pH is going to be 1 minus the probability of pH, or Phoebe catching the mumps. So that is 1 minus 0.08, and we end up with 92%. Our next question, find the probability that neither Calvin nor Phoebe catches the mumps. Well, that could be expressed <clears throat> as the probability of not C and not pH. which are two probabilities we've just calculated. The formula for this AND situation is multiplication of independent events. So the probability of not C times the probability of not PH. And the probability of not C, as we calculated, was 86%. And the probability of not pH was 92%, or 0.92. When we multiply those two numbers together, we end up with 79.12%. Our last example. Find the probability that at least one of them catches mumps. Well, here we can look at this question in two different ways. We could look at all the possible situations, which break down to Calvin and Phoebe catching mumps, Calvin and not Phoebe, not Calvin, and not Phoebe, or not Calvin and Phoebe. These are all four possibilities. And to find the probability that at least one of them catches mumps, that would fall into these categories. Calvin and Phoebe both catch mumps, or Calvin catches mumps, or Phoebe ca catches the mumps. So we could calculate each of these three probabilities individually and add them up, because it's an or situation, and end up with our answer. Or we can make our lives easier. The probability that at least one of them catches mumps is the complement to the probability that no one catches mumps. So the probability of at least one is equal to one minus the probability of no one or neither 
Calvin nor Phoebe. And we just calculated that, so that would be 1 minus 0.7912, which turns out to be 20.88%. If you'd like to check by taking the other approach, where you have to calculate three probabilities instead of just one, feel free to do so. Let's recap. Is the probability of A and B an intersection or a union? What is the mathematical notation to indicate this situation? Well, probability of A and B is an intersection, and we use the upside-down U to symbolize this situation. How do we calculate this probability? Which mathematical operations do we use? Well, in an AND situation, we multiply. Is the probability of A or B an intersection or a union? What is the mathematical notation to indicate this situation? An OR situation is the union of two events. And the notation we use is a right side up U to stand for union. How do we calculate this probability? Which mathematical operations do we use? As we saw, in an OR situation, we add, and if necessary, we subtract the overlap. What are complementary events? Complementary events are two events that are either the event occurring or the event does not occur, A and not A. When might we take advantage of the existence of complementary events? As we saw in the last example, if we have a significant number of events to calculate their probabilities to add up to a larger event, it might be easier to add up the probabilities for the complement of the event and subtract from one. What are key words that can signal the opportunity to use the concept of complementary events? The words at least or at most tend to divide outcomes into two halves smaller, maybe one half smaller than the other. So look for those words to take advantage of the idea of complementary events.